Hi, I'm Corey. Welcome to Creating with Scraps. Today's video is a part of a collaboration, collaboration number 15 of junk journal tips, tricks, and hacks. Rachel and Bella of Rachel and Bella's Crafts organized this for the entire month of February where they brought a variety of paper junk journal artists together, junk journal creators together, and each one is sharing some ideas that they have to make this a little bit more fun, a little bit more easy, more streamlined. It's not to imply that there's only one way or a right way to do any of these things. We're just sharing tips of things that we have found work for us that we want to pass along to you. Some of the things that have already been done or are being done this month are how to utilize book pages, creating tags with scraps, using tea bags, decoupage, jewelry, washi, using a master board, collage, and a variety of other things. There are also some prizes associated with this, and I believe the requirements are in order to be eligible for a prize, and you can be anywhere in the world. I don't believe there are any restrictions on that because the creators are from all over. But you have to like, subscribe, and comment on each of the videos. And I will leave a link below. Actually, I'll come back and edit this because I'm filming ahead of time. Uh, but I'll come back and edit it with the links and the list of who's doing what and when. So in order to be eligible for a prize, you you do those those steps like comment subscribe to each of the people and then at the end i think rachel or bella will draw names or something and then each of the contributors will send you a prize and the prize for mine will be the piece that we're making at the end of the video utilizing the 12 by 12 paper which brings me to what my topic is my topic is using or utilizing unwanted or underloved 12 by 12 paper now that's not to say that you can't do many of the same things with eight and a half by 11 because you can, or six by six for that matter. The idea is how to use up paper that you don't necessarily love or either, or you may love it and just have too much of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so that's what we're going to focus on today. And I'm going to bring you 10 ways that you can utilize some of that unwanted or less loved 12 by 12 paper. All right. Number one. Probably the most obvious and the hardest to do sometimes is just get rid of it. If you don't like it, if it doesn't bring you joy to create with or you're not enjoying the process, then donate it. Give it to somebody else who may enjoy it. You can donate it to scouting clubs, schools, senior centers. There's a variety of ways that you can just get it out of your craft room if it really doesn't make you happy. But what I'm going to focus on for the most part is ways to utilize paper that you either may not love or you have a lot of and ways to just focus on the parts that you do like that that you do enjoy creating with so number one send it on its way number two tone it down and what i mean by that is sometimes we'll like paper and this is actually a poor example of unliked because i love this paper it is oh i wrote it down and now i forgot where i put it it is tracy fox love junk journals fabulously floral flourish it's something like that. It's, it's her, one of her new kits and it's a phenomenally cool kit and absolutely love it. But I printed it several times. In fact, Tracy did a little challenge on her Facebook group. She shared some pieces with us and we were to make tag books. And so I made one too, simply because it was fun. And I shrunk it down because I like little things. And these pieces were all created from the tags that Tracy shared with us and using the the bits of paper and, and such and there are full sheets of this as well in the kit I believe really really enjoyed it and I really liked the paper so I had printed more than I needed and I'm going to be sharing that with you several of these samples are made with that paper so I don't want you to misunderstand and think that I don't care for it because I love it but um, I just have a lot of it because I printed a lot all right Toning it down. Way number two, tone it down. One way to tone something down is to use gesso. And gesso is just an art supply that comes in white, it comes in black. I think you can tint it and make other colors. It's a great paint base, I guess is a poor way to say it, but it's essentially what it is. It's a paint base that you can cover and then you can use other mediums over. You can stamp on top of it or ink on top of it or paint on top of it or what have you. It's a sealant sort of. And it comes most of the time in white or black, but you can also tint it. And the beauty of that is, like here's a great example. These are the, the same piece. Here are the color of the flowers, and here I used kind of a little bit heavier layer of gesso. Now I could have gone even more and co covered it completely, but you can't see any of the color 
of these flowers underneath. You can tell that the flowers are there, but you can't see it. So you can tone it down by covering it with gesso. Well, if you like it, you just didn't want it maybe quite so bright. I actually love the brightness on this one. But here it is, this paper on the back of an envelope. You can see there, I just put a thin layer of gesso over it just to tone it down a little bit so that it didn't, it didn't stand out as much. But a great way to camouflage something is to just put a layer of gesso over it. More ways to tone it down involve different types of paper. So let's say you've got paper that you don't love, and here's a great example. I love Tim Holtz 12x12 12 12 cardstock. I use it probably more than I should, but there are sections of some of the pieces that I don't love. Like there was this big old tag, a price tag or something on here that I didn't love. So let's show, let me show you some of the ways that you can work around that vellum, just standard old vellum. If you put it over, it just gives it a muted effect coffee dyed tracing paper. So this is tracing paper that I have coffee dyed and then flattened. And it covers just a little bit more than the vellum does. You can still see the images through, but it mutes it just a little bit more. Pastry bags. So I had a bunch, I have a whole bunch of these pastry bags that I coffee dyed and I use them a lot, but it gives you just a little bit more coverage. So again, you can still see the images through, but it's a whole lot more subdued. So you can use parchment or baking paper or pastry bags. And you can also use tissue paper. You can use solid colored tissue paper. This happens to be Tim Holtz pattern tissue paper. I can still see the images through, but not to the degree. It takes on the hue and the pattern of the, tra the tissue paper. So those are just some ways that you can do it. And here you can see it. This was a really bright piece of paper behind that I really liked, but it was just too bright for the stamped image that I wanted to put on top. So I just covered it up with some coffee dyed tracing paper and it toned it down and uh, made it usable for this product project. All right, way number three, cut it into shapes. Sometimes when you've got a paper, especially a busier paper like this, which I adore. Again, this is another piece from Tracy's kit, the flourish, fabulously floral flourish kit. You don't all want all the pages necessarily to look the same, so you can cut them into shapes. Here, this is another copy of this particular piece, and I think it was focused on, well, here and here, these two sections. I just cut them into circles and sewed them on a card base so that I could use this as a journaling card. Now, if I wanted to spruce it up a little bit more, I could just add a die cut and probably a Tracy label, but you can just use the basic shapes. I did the same idea, and with the next one, I punched out a bunch of squares. And then I put the squares on a diagonal. You can see, well, maybe you can see. Put the squares on a diagonal, glued them into place, and then trimmed off the extra. And then I added some unfinished die cuts and a little Tracy label and bits of lace and such to make another journaling card. Just a super simple, fairly flat journaling card utilizing shapes. You can use stars, hearts, hexagons, whatever you choose, but the idea is it changes the look of the paper by cutting it into shapes. Number four, collage the whole thing. Every once in a while you have a piece of paper that for whatever reason it's been stamped on, inked on, used, and you want to just collage over or cover the whole thing. Well this sample happens to be postage stamps, which I've shared before, but you can do it with anything. You can do it with your, there's going to be several videos on collage, so I don't really want to cover that, but collage over the whole thing. Super for really paper that you just, there's not much that you like about it at all and you don't care if the whole thing is covered up. All right, if you like parts of it, you can just disguise it. So way number five is to disguise it. Cover up selected bits. Another great example is the Tim Holtz. I think it's in the memorandum pack. There's a distinguished gentleman. Well, some people think he's distinguished and some think he's kind of creepy. And I generally don't tend to leave him uncovered. So I'll cover him up. I utilized this idea here so for this tuck spot so you put it on your page and you've got a tuck here and you've got a tuck here but if you don't like whatever image is here you can just kind of cover it up or disguise it and so I did the same type of thing here really like this green on this paper I like it a lot but I don't necessarily love the eggs or maybe I just don't want them on this particular pocket so I've got a tuck a spot here and then I've got a tuck spot here once I put it on but what I'll do before I glue it down or put it in place in my book, I'll take a couple tickets and I'll cover them up and just a little scrap of lace. 
So I wanted, I didn't want to do it in advance, so you can see those little eggs there that I may not want to show. I'll cover those up with a couple little tickets or an image, and then I'll put a little bit of scrappy lace at the bottom and maybe a label. And I've still got the paper that I like, but I've completely covered the images that I'm not as fond of. So using scraps or elements to cover it in strategic places can be a great way to use it. This paper is one of my favorites from the Tim Holtz line, but I had got an ink, big ink spot on it. So I just covered it with a label. I disguised it. This book page, I think, had a piece of barbed wire here that I didn't necessarily want to show. So I put a label over it. I, I liked it as the pocket. Put a label over it and then put just a little bit of a cluster on it just to hide that piece completely. I liked this paper, especially for more of a masculine book that I'm working on. And I really liked the paper, but this image, the way they collaged this paper, their, the face is partially cut off and I didn't necessarily love that look. So I just took an over the top piece and I'll use a paper clip and well, maybe, and then clip this into place so you can't even see that partial image that wasn't as, as pleasing. And here again, this one, this paper is not necessarily my favorite, but I've just added lots of tickets and tucks and tags, and I collaged over the bottom with a, a postage stamp cluster, and then I put a die cut on it. So you don't even really notice the paper as much. It's still there, and the color that I want is there, but you don't pay attention to the images. So number five was disguise it. Number six, use it as bases or backs, kind of under something else, like a collage, but not collaging over the whole thing. You're not trying to cover it completely. This brown piece was our calendar for 2021, and I didn't want to waste it, so I tore it up, but I didn't want the dates to show. So I've covered it piece, pieces of it. So it's a base for this bookmark tag. And here, this is a Tim, both Tim Holtz packaging, and it was a good sturdy base. I don't know if you can see it here. That's the Tim Holtz thing. I just covered the back with a place to write, and then covered the front with some scraps and strips. And again, another idea of ways to use underloved paper. And I'm able to repurpose this. They're bases. Same thing with this one here. It's just a base, a little tuck spot, tuck spot in the back, and it acts as a base. Same idea here. This one had uh, a stamp big old stamp piece in there. And so what I just covered that up and used the whole thing as a base. Minimally shown. Way number seven is minimally shown. All right, and what I mean by that is you show sections of it, things that you like, but you show just little bits. Great example. I really like this paper, but there was this big image on it that contrasted with what I wanted to put with my stamped image. So I showed the pieces that I liked and I covered the section that I didn't. Similar to what we did with the last one, but more intentional to make sure that I'm showing a specific section. The other one was just kind of like as a background or a base. But this, I want these pieces to show because I really like portions of them. Great example. This was thin, so part of the problem was it was thin, but it was also a little bolder than I wanted. And um, I just used two layers. I used a layer of vellum and a layer of book page to create this envelope so that it it only showed part of, of what I wanted it to show. Envelopes are great for that. Maybe there's something on one side that you don't care for or it's big. By folding it into an envelope, you cover quite a bit of that. And another great way to use partially shown pieces. I don't dislike any of these papers, but accordion paraphernalia ephemera holders have been around for a while. I made these, I don't know, two years ago or something like that. Tracy recently did one, Tracy Fox from Love Junk Journals recently did one with envelopes, which was brilliant because it's much easier to put together with envelopes. You don't have to fold and score and such. But if you're only wanting a little bit to show, well, this is a great way to just have a little bit of it show because your focus is on the outer piece and not the pockets that hold the pieces inside. And there's just two of those. It's a fabulous way to utilize some of that paper that's not gonna show as, as much die cuts. Um, here they are. So I had big pieces like in, in this of uh, same concept but in red and I just, well this one's a solid color that's been glazed, but what I did is I just randomly put dies on there. This is just a die on the paper and it's cut and I get bits and pieces of it that show and I'll put it on book page or a solid piece or something or even or maybe some lace or over some tracing paper to make it stand out and you get a different effect of the images that are on there. 
I did the same thing. I cut two more out and I just put some Seth after vintage beeswax embossing powder on the top of it. So I used embossing glaze and then I put the embossing powder and heat set it and it gives you a little bit of a shimmer. I don't know how well you can see on screen. This is just paper and that is paper that has been embossed with embossing powder. And then one more step before I put the embossing glaze and embossing powder on these, I used a little bit of distress ink. I use I keep starting to say vintage photo, but I don't use vintage photo. I use walnut stain. So I put a little bit of walnut stain and then I did the embossing glaze and then the uh, the embossing medium that you use to adhere the powder. And then I put the Seth after vintage beeswax embossing powder over the top. And they all do essentially the same thing. You just get a little bit of a different look with each, but it's a great way to utilize paper you don't um, you don't want to be front and center. Way number nine is what uh, no, I'm sorry, that was number seven. It was die cuts. Number nine is trial and error. And what I mean by trial and error is when we're working on or trying to build something new, a lot of times we don't get the measurements or the dimensions right the first time and we have to tweak it a little bit. And that's part of the project. This was just a super simple one. And I used paper, don't necessarily love this map paper, even though I really like this paper. So it was a great one to use as I figured out where do I make my score marks? Where do I make my dimensions? Uh, this particular little book, I was in the mood to play with some six by six paper, but I didn't really love this paper. I wanted to try different pockets for each side using six by six paper. So I used paper that I didn't necessarily love to figure out what worked and what didn't. And then now I've got it as my template and I can go back and make it with paper that I really, really do like. So trial and error is number nine. And number 10, no surprise there, my favorite, make scraps with it. And because there's so many different things you can do with scraps. And I'll show you just a few. Scrap pads. This one has lace on one side and paper on the other. You tear a little bit and put it in there because it's great for clusters. So one of my favorite things to do is cut strips into half inch strips, just long half inch strips and glue them down like a collage on the back of a piece of unwanted paper. And then I cut them into strips as I need them. I treat it like a master board basically. And when, like here, I used the section of it to be the back for my bookmark. And I used another section of it here just as an edge for a, a stamped cluster. I'll use this piece. I saved it aside and I'll use it the same, the same way. So I'll make kind of like a collage master board, but with scraps and strips like this. And then I can come back and utilize it as needed. Same thing here, but just a little bit wider. I didn't, this was a map paper that I didn't necessarily love, but I liked the coloring of it. And I just put a section of it on here on this side piece to work as a base for, for this uh, cluster. You can make it into a belly band. This one would be a snippet roll, a fat paper snippet roll, right? And you can cut off sections and use them as belly bands or pockets or tucks as needed. And here in just a side tuck, just there were a couple images on here that I didn't love as much or I didn't want them to show. So I just cut them down and cut them into strips, layered them, and I glue this on the edge of a page and it's a side tuck. Tinier strips. I use these all the time to put die cuts on top of for journaling spots or journaling cards or even gift cards. And you only see a little bit of it. So if you know there's an image that you don't necessarily love, this is a great way. I do this with postcard, postcards frequently because sometimes the image on the front isn't as cool as the writing or the postmark on the back. And you can utilize your postcards that way. Same idea with just little bits and strips. And then you can weave them, cut them into strips, different widths, different sizes, and then weave them. This one's an easy one to see because I used coffee dyed offcuts. And you can see the differences and how well that that can work if you choose to. So again, if there's an image you don't really love on your paper or a color you don't really love, you only get little bits and pieces of it. All right, so that that is a list of my 10 ways to utilize paper that you either have too much of or don't necessarily love. Now, the, the project we're gonna do with this uses a, a one sheet of 12 by 12 paper. And before I say that, the way it came about was, uh, I moved it and now, oh, here it is. I had done this one on a previous video, just a super quick, simple way to make one sheet of 12 by 12 paper gets you two of these little mini fold over pockets. They're great little, you can store them this way with ephemera if you want in your bin. You can put them in the mail as happy mail, whatever. Easy, quick, 
fun to do, great way to use that paper. Well, I had two of these on my desk one afternoon and I thought, well, how can I put them together? So I had two, the identical thing, and I'll show you how to make them. And so I started looking at ways I could combine them and to turn them into a little booklet. And that is what I have done here. And I'll show you, <clears throat> excuse me, I've done them a couple different ways. I put a little closure on it because, you know, I like a little closure and I'm getting it all tangled. But basically, I just took two of those, put them together, so I still have the same one, two, three, four pockets, plus the flip to open it up, and now I have a journaling spot inside. And I can fill it with little pieces to add to my journaling or gifts or what have you. Super quick, fun, easy. I chose to use the whale tail punch as a close. You don't have to. You can use a circle punch. You can use a square punch. You can use any kind of a tab that you like. And then just wrap the string around, tuck your bead in, and well, maybe don't maybe don't knot it like I did. And there's your closure. It makes it. I if I were to mail this as happy mail, I don't know that I'd use this type of a closure simply because that would be considered bulk and uneven, and they would charge you a package rate for it. But you could use Velcro. You could use anything for a closure. I just thought that one was kind of pretty. And here's I've made this video more times than I can count, but. Um, sounds and, and life and texts and such keep happening in between but which is fine because then that gives me more that I can give as prizes but I've done each of these tabs just a little bit differently here I've got it on the outside with a bit of lace and I've got a tuck spot right here because of the way the two pages laid together I thought that was really pretty as a tuck spot and then I could put a notepad right here a flip up notepad if I chose to and I've still got my tuck spot on this one, I cut it, the inside piece down just a little bit and made another divot, so I've got an inside tuck spot. And so the whale tail punch goes, tucks inside, whereas, well, I, did, I guess I did tuck it inside there as well. Wouldn't have mattered either way. Tucked inside. Where this one, the one I made on the last video that didn't work, I did it a little bit differently because the edge of this paper says home sweet home on it, and if I had put my closure, my whale tail on the outside, the word home would have been covered. So I was just mindful and rather than putting it on the outside, I just tucked it on the inside and I still have, you know, a little tuck spot in here and then a tuck spot, open it up. I've got another side tuck spot, my journaling section, tuck spot on the back and a tuck spot here. Another thing about this particular one, it was very vibrant and bold inside and the, this green magnified. So I just took a piece of tracing paper, not tracing paper, tissue paper, and used my glue stick and covered it up before gluing the pieces together. Just again, as a way to tone it down and make it not, you can still see the green. It's just not as bright and bold and out there. So you have options even in, in how you choose, choose to close it. Now, the way I made it in the previous video, if you're a person saying, oh, I know how to do that. You do it essentially the same way. You're gonna use four pieces, of six by six paper, so one sheet of 12 by 12, cut vertically and horizontally into six inch squares. You score them in the same place as you do it the same way. But before you glue them, you make your decisions. And so that's what we're gonna focus on. You, I'm gonna show you two different ways here. I prefer using 12 by 12 double-sided paper for this, just because it's easy, it's quick, and I have a lot of it. You don't have to. This is single-sided 12 by 12 paper and it would work just fine. All I need to do, because I really don't want one big wide expanse, I'll just fold it in half, put my glue stick on it, run it through my Xyron, and I've had great luck with that technique and I generally use Gorilla glue stick, but I imagine any glue stick will work. What happens is I put the glue stick and then there's almost always a place that I didn't get glue stick. The heat reactivates the glue and spreads it a little bit so it acts as a sealant. So when I put glue stick between these two and then run it through my laminator, then I get this really great bond. So if I were going to use single-sided paper, I would need two sheets because I'm gonna cut this at six and then the second one I would cut at six. You need four pieces of six by six paper to do the little booklets. Two if you're just doing the single Happy Meal fold, but four if you're gonna do two of them. Uh, there's other papers you can use and other ways you can use it. Here's a great example. This particular paper is one of the one of the books of samples that I did. And it's really, see, there you go. Really bright on one side and that's not bad, but it's just not necessarily my style. And sometimes 12 by 12 paper is made to be 12 by 12 paper. And so if I were to cut this in six, it would say ho and me. 
and only part of that because of the folds would show so it wouldn't be the most appropriate but I can certainly save this for many other ways to use scrap the center section on this this was a 12 by 12 sheet well I didn't really want her face because it was going to hit in the right spot and down here is a tea set and I didn't really want the focus to be on the tea set so I just cut out the middle section that I wanted and again I can use these scraps for other other projects and other things but one sheet of 12 by 12 paper double-sided paper will get you and that's what this is I've just cut it down uh, I don't believe this is Tim Holtz but I could be wrong maybe it is it's just a piece of double-sided 12 by 12 paper and I have no idea where I cut it I just cut it six and six right cut it down the center at six and cut it across the side at six so I've got four sections and when you're doing this you don't have to make many decisions fortunately but one decision you want to make you're gonna make two scores in each so I'm gonna make one booklet and one booklet and I just grab the papers it doesn't really matter which one in which order though I suppose I want the pages the papers to go in the same direction and I want to make sure my font is right side up so I am going to be mindful of that so maybe I'll put those two together and these two together um, so when I'm looking at it the first thing I've got to do is I've got to decide what do I want to be my flap what piece do I want to be my two inch flap and it's going to be a section that's on the right hand side of your paper so if I were to use this one this two inch section right here would be my flap if I were to use this one this two inch section would be my flap this two inch section or this two inch section those are my options well I like the way the postcard fits there so I'm gonna let's see is that two inches or less yes I'll be able to fit the whole thing so I'm gonna choose this as my two inch flap that's going to be on the front so I'm gonna take it because again, because of the way we fold it, the right side is the two inch flap that will be on the front. I'm gonna flip it over, and I don't care that it's not in one in any specific order, and I'm gonna score it at two inches. And this is my first of two sets, basically. I'm gonna make two sets of these, and fold them and score them the exact same way. I'm just not going to glue them yet because I'm going to make a few alterations to turn it into a book. So I score it at two, and there's the front of my first section. And then the second one, I am going to score at three and a half. I don't remember which way I want it to go. I want it to go like this. There we go. I'm going to score it at three and a half. And that is my second section. All right, so that is the first set complete. Now, would I love it if this were the way it finished? No, I wouldn't like the way those lined it up at all, and I wouldn't like the fact that that was upside down. But this is the first card. I'm going to tuck the second card in right here, so I have to be aware of what's going to show, but it's not going to be this. And maybe, maybe I want it to be like this, right? Maybe I want it to look like this, and, and that would be an easy thing to do. So I've got my first one done. I'm putting it off to the side. My second one, I need to score at two in f again. But this time I want, this time I want, I guess it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna score it right here. There's my two inch section. Okay. Uh, let's see does it because I need another I'm gonna put this one together and it does matter see ah Corey it does matter because let's just go like this the two inch section is going to be tucked inside right here I've got the first section done when the second section is done it's gonna slide right in the first section and this paper showing is absolutely fine I don't mind in the least but I am gonna be mindful when I score this one at three and a half I want to make sure it's scored where I want it to be. I want this piece to show. So I'm scored it so that it's the line pieces out, right? Because there's my first section. Now here is my second section. Okay, here's my second section. The second section is going to tuck right into the first section. Okay, and so just for that very that reason alone, I wanted this piece to show because I didn't necessarily care for the way the postage card looked on the postage card. All right, so I've got my two sections. Section two, putting it aside. Let's work on section one or 
card one, I guess. Card one of two cards. When we put this whole thing together, there is a tuck spot right here, right? And it doesn't matter because of the way the card opens that it's not a lot of space from the spine into the tuck. You still have room to tuck. You still have room to tuck to get it in and out. Here, not a big deal at all. You've got plenty of room. If you don't make a modification, what happens here is this tuck spot gets really close to the spine where you have your pages and it makes it difficult to get in and out. So before we glue anything, before we do anything else, I want to trim one section and that's on the first card, the first set. I want to trim because this is going to be the inside and you can see the amount of space between where my pages are and my spine is really narrow. So I don't want to trim too much because I want it to cover, but I'm going to take, I don't know, maybe a half an inch an inch and I'm not even going to measure. In fact, I'll probably choose an image on here as my guideline, but on the card number one, two pieces, the scored at two, scored at three and a half. The piece that I scored at three and a half, the three and a half inch piece, I'm going to cut, I don't know, a half an inch, an inch off. No more than that, but about a half, between a half an inch and an inch. And I'm going to look and see what image here, so it doesn't look kind of funky. And I'm going to cut there. And it's about three quarters of an inch that I ended up cutting off. Not a big deal at all. All right, so I cut that off and I'm still left with this. Say you can see it's still closed, which it doesn't really matter. And I've got a much wider place to get in and work with here. All right, so this is card, still working with card number one. I want to take a divot out of the front and back. If you're a great eyeballer, you're good to go, but I'm not. So I'm going to mark it at three inches on the right and three inches on the left. And then I'm going to take two divots because those, when it's upright, are going to be my front and back. And it, the depth doesn't matter. You don't have to get your depth exact simply because they are not going to touch each other. So if one's a little deeper than the other, it, it really won't show. All right. And now I'm going to ink these edges because I'm going to glue them down. And when they're glued down, it's a lot harder to ink. So I'm just going to ink these two pieces. If you're not an inky person, don't ink at all. You, don't have to, you certainly don't have to. I just like the way the ink makes it stand out, so I'm going to do that side piece. Right. Now I am going to put this together. If I were wanting to cover this paper for whatever reason, I, this is where before I glue it, I would put my tissue paper, tracing paper, whatever paper I was going to put in there. But I, I'm not covering it, so I don't. But just wanting to give you a heads up. If you're a person who's wanting to cover it or needing to cover it, now is the time to do it. And then I'm going to put card number one together. I'm going to run glue on the inside at the top and bottom. This is reptile glue. Art Glitter Glue works uh, barely there. I just got some for the first time and it works just fine. I choose the reptile glue for a couple reasons. It gives me a little bit more wiggle room than Art Glitter Glue. So I have a little bit longer before it dries. And more than anything else, it doesn't, the tip doesn't clog. I, it will clog eventually, sure. But I can leave my cap off for a little bit. I don't have to put the pin in every time. And I'm just frankly too lazy to put the pin in every time. Uh, let's see. I want to put this the right way. And I don't, yeah, that's, it's that way. And then all I do is where that score is, I match up my front and back. And I put it right where I've scored it. And then I didn't put any clips out. And you don't have to do this section. You can hold it for a second. I just, I'm lazy and I'm going to go on to the next piece. So I'm going to let this dry and make sure it's clipped and close and let it dry. It doesn't take long at all. All right. And then you get glue all over your hands. All right. So that's piece number one or card number one done. Now I'm going to work on card number two. When I'm assembling card number two, I'm going to do it the exact same way. Two inch section goes on top, three and a half inch section goes on the bottom. They get sandwiched just like this. I can leave it just like this. But when I put these two pieces together to create my booklet, right? Because I'm going to glue these together and then glue this, and then my book is in here, right? I actually kind of like the way that looks. I think that looks good, especially if I ink it. But I have to decide do I want to have it reset on the bottom a little bit? I can trim off this piece. 
so that it, it's either exactly flush or it's just a little bit offset or I can leave it like this so where it stands out and it's going to look like this at the end. Well you can see here it doesn't it, it lines up nicely with that so I actually think I like that. So what I'm going to do, and I don't even have to, because I'm going to take just a tiny little bit off this, this top piece, so that you can see this edge just a smidge more. You don't have to. You can leave it just the way it is. But I, I kind of like the way that looked. And I'm just going to take off a sliver. I mean, literally a sliver so that it shows a little bit more. I don't know, maybe what is that, an eighth of an inch, a sixteenth of an inch? I just took it down a little bit so that it's a little bit more pronounced and that you can see it. And then before I glue it, because it's so much easier, I'm going to run the ink along the edge of this. For those of you who don't like the sound, I apologize. All right, so this is piece one, put it aside. Now I'm going to assemble piece two. And I'm going to do the same thing on piece two that I did on piece one. I'm going to take the three and a half inch and two and a half inch piece, the back piece, right? And I'm going to turn it on its side and I'm going to mark it at three inches so I can take that front and back divot just like I did on my other piece. And I'm going to take the divot. And you don't have to, you can leave it just straight. I just like the divot because it clearly marks the fact that it's a pocket. And ink that edge. This is a new walnut stain pad, so it's a little bit darker. They do eventually wear out. I re-ink mine a lot, but they eventually get all felty and just need to be replaced. All right, so my three and a half inch edge, the three and a half inch side is the one that gets tucked into the two inch flap, right? Just, just like that. And I am going to ink this while I'm at it simply because this is going to show. Remember on on our card, the way we set it up, it's going to show. And I don't have to do it now. I could have done it later, but it's just for the sake of this. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I want my divots to be on the side, so I'm going to glue the top and the bottom. I don't need a lot of glue. PVA glue, art glitter glue, barely there glue. Uh, I'm forgetting something. Oh, Gina K Connect, great glue. You know, just do whatever you can get a hold of and whatever you like. They all essentially work the same thing, same way. All right, and then I'm going to put these two together. Again, I want the three and a half inch side to go underneath the two inch side. Three and a half inch piece underneath the two inch piece. Fold it over, make sure it's tucked, and then I am going to clamp this just for a minute. Again, no, you don't have to, but it's a good way to go. And you can see here, either I didn't clamp it straight or I didn't cut it straight. There's just a little smidge there, but I can fix that. All right, while that is drying, I'll give it a second. I can do this later on, but since I'm here and I'm waiting, I'm going to ink this up really quick. And I don't add much. I don't. I don't think it needs much, but it just just a little bit of something to, you know, make it stand out. Because of the way I did this, I could put a notepad in here if I chose to, on this one. So I would have two notepads in this book or this journal, mini journal, gift journal. I'm not sure what I should call it. All right, and I put here's a bone holder. I have a couple of these things, so I'm always putting them down, but I'm going to give it a nice sharp crease. All right, this is dry. And now I remember I said that I had I noticed that it wasn't matched up. Oh, here it is, this one. So I'm going to trim. I don't like those scissors. I have different scissors that I use for glue and not glue to keep them super sharp. These are my glue scissors. So I'm just going to trim that little overhang. So this was section two, section one, and now I'm going to put the two sections together. And what I'm going to do is at the two inch scores, I'm just going to match them up at the two inch scores, just like that. That's all there is to it. Make sure they're, they don't have to be 100% perfect, but I really want them to be close to the same size. And I am going to glue those two together again at the top at the bottom. Now, 
if this were on the inside, I'd take a divot, but I don't really want to take a divot because I don't want this on the inside. You'll notice, oh, I'll save that. I'll save that for later. We don't have to do it now. We can do it now, but we don't have to. So I'm going to glue these together. And the only place I'm going to glue them together is up until the two inch hinge on the top and the bottom. That's it. And I'll show you why in just a minute. So I'm going to glue these together. Make sure they're tucked in nice and tight and that they're straight. And then I'm going to clamp them. Okay. Now my next uh, section is to put in my little booklet. So I've got my front cover with my little tuck spot. I'm going to put a tab in here later. I've got my tuck here. I'm going to open this up. I've got tucks here and here, but there's going to be pages in between. So if these two aren't perfect, it doesn't really matter because they're not going to show next to each other. And then I've got my pocket on the back. That postcard's upside down, but that's right side up. So there was just no way around that, which is fine. I don't mind a little upside down now and then. My next step is to put in my book pages or my journaling pages. Now you can certainly sew these with a three hole pamphlet stitch, with a five hole pamphlet stitch. My preference is the sewing machine. It's fast and easy and it's, and it's straight and it's sturdy. So that's what I generally choose to use. But any of those, you could use a long arm stapler. You could use, oh, I'm sure I'm forgetting something. You could tie a piece of elastic around like a traveler's notebook style, you know? Do, do what you enjoy, but I like to sew it in. I like the way it looks and I like the durability. So that's what I'm going to do. And what I do is I just, I've got it, my paper folded and then I line it up, make sure it's tucked in that crease, make sure it's mostly equidistance on both sides. It's just cut a little bit smaller than the six inch. And then I'm going to clamp top. Oops, I'm going to move it first. And then I'm going to clamp it to the top and bottom. And then I'm going to make sure it's tucked in here and I'm going to do the same thing down at the bottom. I'm going to clamp it. And I even put my sewing machine up here so that I could do this for you quickly and easily. All right, I've got my sewing machine on my straight stitch and then I made it as wide apart as it would go. On my machine that's 4.5 but every machine is just a little bit different. So I am going to put this in my machine and this where I folded is going to be my sew line and I'm just going to sew it straight down that line in that crease. I'm going to back stitch a little bit. And just guide it through. I have it on a slower stitch to make it easier, or a slower speed to make it easier to control. And that's it. Quick, easy, I don't have to poke holes. And, and I can and I do sometimes, but I like this method. And then I don't have to decide what I want to do with the center strings. And I'm going to do that off to the side. All right, take my clamps out. And I have a book. I don't know where did I put. Oh, I put my bone folder down again. I don't, oh, here we go. I don't normally lose them, but you know, things happen. And then I'm going to give that a nice big crease. Now, if I choose to, you can see here where the threads are. I can leave it just like this, or I can get a bit of washi and cover that whole piece with washi. I don't mind it. I think it's kind of a fairly polished look, so I'm going to leave it just as it is. But you certainly can choose to cover that with washi or a piece of lace. Lace would be really pretty, too, if you were wanting a, a little bit more feminine book. In fact, I may come back and do you know, some of my thin lace and just some glue and cover it over the edge. All right, my next step is to put my tab for my closure, right? So I'm gonna tab for my closure. I'm gonna use the whale tail punch simply because I've already punched it. And I'm gonna put that up on top. Now you can see here that these were sewn in and this one was not. And it doesn't really matter one way or the other which way you choose to do it. I sometimes will add, you can see on those, I put little lace scraps down before I sewed them just because I like a little bit of lace, but you don't have to. Like this one's kind of kind of got a gender neutral feel to it, I suppose. So if I wanted to give it to a male friend who doesn't necessarily like lace, I would just leave it like this. Maybe I wouldn't put any lace at all. But if I wanted to give it to somebody who prefers a lacy look, I could just add that there. And here I can tuck it under 
this edge like I've done in the past or I could put it over both pieces. I actually think I prefer it tucked under so I'm going to go with that. But before I do that I'm going to ink, give a little bit of ink to this inside edge. I inked the outside edge but I'm going to ink the inside edge again just because it's easier to do before you put the tab on. All right so I'm going to use my wheel tab, pad, tab. I think I decided, did I decide for or against Lisa? I don't even remember it was a long time ago. I just threw, literally threw in some scraps from my little itty bitty scrap bin and I'll put them down there and see if I like them. If I don't like it, I won't use it. If I like it, I'll use it. Yeah, I don't really think it adds much to it, so I'm not going to. I am going to glue this in place. I still may add a little bit of lace to the edge. We'll see. And I decided I wanted to tuck it in between the two layers. And how about right... There, I can go down or up. You know what? There's a little bit of a... Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll put it right. Again, see, it gives me a little bit more wiggle room than I... I don't even know if I'm in frame. Sorry. It gives me a little more wiggle room than our glitter glue does. And it grabs fairly quickly. I clamp, though I don't necessarily need to clamp uh, most of the time, simply because it's just a habit. All right. And I'm not going to sew this down. I guess I could, but I kind of like the, the clean look of this without it being sewn. Then again, I really like the way it is sewn. Here, I can make the tab go up higher. So if I don't sew it, I've got a tuck spot right here that goes up a little higher. If I sew it, I limit my tuck spot. So maybe I'll just leave it the way it is. All right, I'm going to put a hole, and this is about an inch wide, so I can put it in the center. It is almost exactly an inch wide. And again, I'm not great at eyeballing the center, so I tend to mark it. But if you don't like to mark it, you don't have to mark it. Eyelet punch. Punch my hole. I put a little eyelet in here. I generally don't use this eyelet setter, but the other one I use is a spring-loaded one and it's really loud. Do I like that color? I guess so. Though I actually think I'd prefer silver. You know what? I think I'd prefer silver. I put that in there for a different one. I think I'd prefer silver. I think I've got silver. Yeah, I do. I've got some silvery ones here. Those are like a bright silver, but I have like a more of a brushed silver too, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I don't. Maybe I'll just a really bright silver. Oh no, here we go. Here's more of a brushed silver. that in here. Yeah. And, well, maybe I'm going to drop it. Put that in there. Without dropping it, hopefully, and I will set it. I, I'll show you here. See, that splits. This one splits in to four, so it doesn't look bad. This one you can see maybe it splits it like a flower. So your split just looks a little bit different if you care. All right, now I want to close it around. So I've got this string, you know, dollar string. I don't mind if I use a lot simply because it's dollar string. And I'm going to put before, now I grabbed some beads, but that was before I used this color. I don't know that I want to use these. Now all these have beads on the end, just because they were kind of fun with beads on the end. But I selected the colors in advance to match what I was doing. Whereas this one, I didn't. These are just leftover beads. And I don't know that I love these brown beads with this black. So I'll, I'm not going to put beads on it, but I'll show you how to put the beads on if you choose to. I'll save it and put beads on later. The way I make this string to accept the beads is I just make myself a needle with, and this works with DMC floss, this works with thicker twine, it works with thinner twine, it doesn't matter. You can use fabric, yarn, ribbon, seam binding. You can make yourself a needle on it. And you just put a little bit of your wet glue and you roll it between your fingers and you make a needle out of it. Sometimes it takes a little bit more because this is thicker 
string, I guess, twine. I'm not 100% sure what the correct name is it for it is. And I'll just roll it between my fingers and I've got a needle so that when I'm ready to put beads on here, I just, this is my needle and I poke it right through the bead, pull it up and then tie my knot and then I snip that off. And I'm gonna do it on the other side too because on this particular one, the needle needs to, or the beads are gonna go on both ends. And again here, roll it. I didn't get, I got most of that on my fingers and not on the string. So let's try that. And then I just use a baby wiper, go wash my hands when I'm done to get that extra glue off my fingers. Just twist it back and forth. And now I've got a needle on both ends and sticky fingers. All right. Put one end of the string through and I just leave myself a tail just a little bit past it and I'll wrap it around and tie a knot, pulling both both pieces all the way through. And I want it a little bit longer because remember, I'm gonna tie a bead on here eventually. So I wanna make sure it goes past the edge. I want it to come down a little bit, but I don't want it to be too long because I don't need it to be too long. So I've got it wrapped around like that. So I've got a place for a bead right here. And then I'll wrap this around, I don't know, two, three times, whatever sounds good, whatever feels good like that, right? Then I tuck it through. I don't tie it in a knot or anything. I just kind of tuck it through and I wrap it around one more time. Pull that through, holds it in place because it doesn't need anything more than that. And then I will use my second needle and I'll put a bead up here, tie it in a knot. And as my Australian friends would say, Bob's your uncle, it's all done. All right, so we will have four of these to give away. So I will have four prizes, four random prizes. And I believe Rachel will announce those. I think she has said that she will do that at the end of it, at the end of February. Please check out the other ladies. And for those of you who are just here for the collaboration part, thank you very much for watching. I hope I gave you some ideas. And for those of you who generally watch, um, some of the things that are coming next, what's up next? I've finished up all of the stamp and scrap cluster kits. Everybody that has paid that I have agreed to mail it to, I have mailed it to. I deliberately put aside three extras and I'm going to, on my next video, announce, uh, oh shoot, Tracy Fox from Love Junk Journal, to buy me a coffee. And the idea isn't to buy me a coffee, but the, the idea is to use that as a raffle. One of my fabulous viewers said, why not do a raffle? And I thought, oh, that's a great idea. So I made three extra. And I apologize for those of you who said I told I couldn't make any more. I'd committed grand total in to a hundred of these and I've made them all and I've mailed all the ones that have been paid, but I just can't, couldn't keep making them. So I apologize if I sent you an email saying, I'm sorry, I'm done. I've, I've made enough, but I did make three extra so that I could raffle these off. And then I've kept enough of the two for fives. Well, actually, actually that's not the two for five bin. It's on the other side. So I've got, I'm going to raffle. And if you do the buy me a coffee thing, and again, I'm going to have a video that explains this better, but it basically, this is coming up. So you have a chance if you choose to, and it's not, again, buy me a coffee. It's, I'm going to donate a little bit more to um, some of the families. And even since that time, two more families have lost people, two more friends, families, friends and families have been lost passed away unexpectedly. So I'm gonna raffle off three of these and some of the others, so stay tuned for that. That's coming and that's gonna come with my next video, which is, so I've done clusters and I do those all the time and I've done stamp, postage stamp clusters. Well, um, the video I made from Gail using these stamped images on a base, a formula base, started me thinking, I started making more and then I thought stamped clusters. And so I'm gonna do a real brief video on stamped clusters and how I make stamped image clusters and some of the different options with those. So that's coming up very soon. And then I've got, I was looking as I was putting some of these together, all my little lace bit, my little itty bitty lace bits that I use even throughout these projects is kind of overflowing. So 
10 ways to use itty bitty lace scraps or your lace scraps is coming up soon too. So that is on the near future. All right. I think I'm under an hour. I hope I'm under an hour. Thank you for watching. Be sure and check out the other people in the junk journal tips, tricks, hacks, collab or collaboration. Take care and happy creating.